Thanks. Um, I actually don't have very much to say. I think, uh, can I just get a show of hands how many people out here have used Julia Box? So I don't need to say very much about it, right? Uh, the, the purpose of this, uh, this lightning talk was mainly to sort of uh, just give a sense of you know, where it's going and maybe get very quick feedback from everyone on where you'd like to see it go. I think uh, Tanmay out here, if you can raise your hand, and Shashi back there are the, the guys, and, and maybe even Amit if he's in the room. The guys who really built Julia Box, I'm just the marketing guy, if, if I might say so. Um, so this is Julia Box. You just sign in uh, using your Google authentication, and uh, it just gets in there. I'm always surprised how fast it is to use it from the US compared to when I'm back home in India. And uh, I just put together uh, you know, a notebook with, with some thoughts of you know, where Julia Box is. Is this, is this visible, kind of? It's too big? OK. Is this good? Yeah. OK. So yeah, you know, everyone's gone there. So run Julia in your browser. I mean, our real goal is that you know, we hope to take scientific discovery to the next level, make it easy, reproducible, all the good stuff that we talked about. I personally think that uh, you know, something like Julia Box or some version of something similar like Julia Box can make, make it very easy to do reproducible scientific discovery, have your data and code all sort of published online. When we were designing this conference, there was a lot of discussion about maybe we should ask all the, uh, all the conference participants to just submit Julia notebooks and sort of no PDFs for publishing proceedings. But I don't think that's, you know, that's a great idea. I don't know if you're going to be able to do it. But this is, this is where I think uh, you know, things, are, things ought to go. Who is using it? There's a ton of classrooms using it. University is using it. A uh, lot of classes at MIT. I don't know if Alan is in the audience. Uh, He's back there, so you can uh, maybe say how many classes do you know? Is it like half a dozen or something now? Half a dozen, yeah, sure. Okay, um, bunch of classes at Stanford and CU and uh, Are there are there others teaching courses here that are using Julia Box that I don't know of, or you know, because I know that there's at least a dozen out there, but I've lost track. So if if you are one of those, email me. Um, I, I also get an email every once in a while from someone who's saying, you know, we, we need feature X or feature Y in Julia Box. We've moved most of our development completely to Julia Box, and this is great. And we just like to see it become a full development uh, and deployment environment. And, you know, all of us share much of the same vision there. So I, I think that's going to happen. A big thanks to the Amazon Web Services for providing us with compute credits for running Julia Box. Uh, we hope, uh, you know, we, we hope to keep finding some ways to keep the lights on with Julia Box. It's a continuous challenge. Okay, cur current features of Julia Box, just to sum it up, um, hosted Jupyter Notebooks, log in with uh, Google Authentication, you get a shell, you get a file manager, you could sync with GitHub and Google Drive. And uh, there are over 100 pre-installed packages, which we hope to sort of not deal with going forward. Um, maybe have a fewer set of packages that are pre-installed and then let people install their own. So a lot of that stuff is happening. The current architecture of Julia Box is it's all running on Amazon Web Services. And a lot of you have asked us if we can run it on OpenStack, if we can run it on something else. Can it be run in a university? We want to support all of those, but it's very tough to do everything at the same time. But I believe that uh, we will have something which is more modular so that you can kind of take out the AWS specific parts and run run local instances of Julia Box either on your own laptop or, or on a departmental cluster or for teaching a class locally. Uh, and, and the way it's going is that you know, each individual component of Julia Box should get dockerized as we go along. And if you have any questions about that, Tanmay is the guy uh, to ask these questions, not me. Uh, we kind of, uh, you know, we were writing some uh, you know, proposals and stuff, and we made this nice looking diagram for what uh, Julia Box ought to be. So there's a, it's actually quite a complex system already. I, I think a lot of this is not sort of visible unless you actually look at the source. But there's a bunch of infrastructure that's running in the, in the back out there. And then there's notebook servers and collaboration services that we, ought to, that we want to build. Uh, Azure, I think uh, you know, we, want, we want to just build beautiful Azure UIs and just click a button and have them serve from Julia Box. You know, or just expose your APIs and build your own front ends. Um, so, so basically, de develop and deploy entire applications on Julia Box with, with a lot of ease. And we just like sort of having all of this in one place. 
I'll, I'll finally end with just one final bit on parallel computing. Uh, that's, this is a feature that came up on the mailing list, and uh, it's just about uh, ready. It's not yet launched. Uh, the, the, the real thing is every time you know, we've done a talk, uh, recently we've asked people, what would you do with thousands of cores if you had them? And uh, you know, no one has a good answer right off the cuff in the audience, and, and I don't have a good answer too. I mean, you know, we know that everyone wants these things and they want to be able to program them easily. So we took a call that what Julia Box will do is make it very easy to uh, make uh, make it very easy for people to get access to as many cores as they can get, and where where else than on something like AWS. Um, and uh, this is this is a screenshot of uh, of the new UI that should pop up in your screens uh, in a few weeks, I'm guessing. And you can just select the number of cores and select uh, you know spot or regular instances, and uh, start up a bunch of machines and compute with them. And I was hoping to have a demo for that today, but maybe later on. So that's all I have. Thank you.